So, I made a tool for Blender. It generates a proxy mesh, binds a target mesh to it, and uses cloth modifiers to simulate jiggling tissue. But not only for one mesh, it does it for a whole character and his clothing. I called Jiggle Gen. And today I'm showing you how I made the simulation for this character within a couple of minutes. Jiggle Gen is divided into two parts. We have the simulation area where we define the physical behavior of the clove simulation and we have the batch area where we later on generate the mesh geometry. In the simulation settings we can define things like start and end of the simulation, bake all dynamics, delete all dynamics, or even toggle our armatures from wrist to pose. Below that we can find all the simulation settings that you also know from the cloth modifier. These settings can then be loaded or saved in the preset section. You also can get the settings data from an already existing cloth simulation or pasting it. For the batch operation, we can use as many objects as we like and use their vertex groups to generate the desired mesh. The model should have a clean topology with an armature modifier. The first thing we are going to do is creating a couple of vertex groups. I want to have four cloth simulations, so that means I create four vertex groups and name them accordingly. After that, we toggle the armature to rest pose and go into weight paint mode. Here I'm changing the visibility of the vertex group so I can see more clearly which area is selected and which area is not selected. And now I'm painting all the influences for the vertex group that I have been created previously. So the calf, the thighs, the butt and the breasts. It's very important that the areas that should not be used for the simulation is marked black, not blue. Blue areas means zero influence of the vertex group. Still, it's selected as this particular vertex group. Therefore, Blender will use it to generate the mesh. If you want to remove the parts of the selection correctly, use the Subtract brush under Brushed Settings. After that, we can open JiggleGen again and add the object to the job list. The vertex group we just defined can be then translated into an entry. For each entry, we can define a preset in the preset list. If we leave it blank, we will just use the settings that are provided in the simulation setting area. At collision, we we'll create a collision modifier to the selected mesh. And parent to target will create a parent between the generated mesh and the selected object. In here, we can also add a decimate modifier and a smooth mesh modifier. All the settings we are making here can be copied and pasted to all other entries. Once we are done setting this up, we can hit Generate Cloth. JiggleGen will now generate the mesh and bind the target with a surface deform modifier to each of the generated geometries. Let's take a look at the result. As you can see, the target is now perfectly following the cloth geometry. However, in this case, the cloth isn't really behaving like moving tissue. Therefore, we need to fine adjust it furthermore. The easiest way would be adding more influence to the pin group. We can raise the offset of each entry here, or adjusting the gain of the selected vertex group. Another way would be of course changing the presets or the simulation settings. After some tweaking and fine-tuning, we are now done with the cloth geometry. If needed, we can use the remaining areas of the target mesh and generate a collision mesh, which acts as a counterpart to the cloth mesh. You can use it to let the body interact with itself, without creating dependency loops. After finishing up the body, we can now continue with the clothes, the accessories and the hair. Everything can be done in the same way as before. We can add now the clothes to the batch list and specify each entry. Since I've already generated the body mesh and I don't want to lose its settings, I isolate the job from the list by pressing the eye icon. It will now be ignored in the next batch operation.
You can also use Jiggle Gen to simulate the motion of rigid bodies, like these belts. We basically create a very stiff cloth sim and make a vertex parent between the bell and the cloth mesh. I couldn't write a decent remesher by myself, yet, so I modeled the cloth mesh for the belts by hand. But I made a shortcut function that automatically creates a vertex parent to an empty. This function is only visible in edit mode. This function will create an empty, which follows the movement of the previously selected vertices during the cloth simulation. All that's left to do is parenting the belts to that empty. And that's it! I hope you found that video refreshing and educative. If you have any feedback for me, please don't hesitate to reach out for me. And if you're interested uh, in the program, just step below in the video description and get to my Gumroad page. Stay tuned for upcoming updates and new tools that I provide there.